So, hi everyone, it's good to have you here. <laughs> the end of an interesting year, I think. We can safely say it wasn't quite how we'd all thought it was going to turn out back in January. Um, but it's been, in some ways, in, in, I think in adversity, I think it's really sort of showing the best of GoGM as well. And I say in the in the intro to the year in review, I think in some ways, I think I've seen other projects or organisations kind of struggle to know what to do uh, in the pandemic because their whole model is based around selling people stuff, you know, or whatever. You know, it's like and, you know, selling services. And suddenly, when you're in a, a crisis, that wasn't appropriate. But I think for GoGen, in some ways, it was easy to know what we should do because our whole community is built around sort of care and support and, and people have been sort of really helpful and, and caring. So I think in some ways, we it sort of really showed the values of the of the community that were already in place could, could sort of come into play then. So um, this is what we're going to cover uh, in the hour, or now 50 minutes. So I'm going to start with awards. Um, then uh, Beck and Packer are going to go through some of the survey results. Um, and thanks for everyone who completed the survey. Uh, and then Rob's going to uh, launch our annual report and look forward to what we're doing next year and just go through some of the, the outputs that we've produced this year. So, um, yeah, and there will be penguins all the way along. Hi, Deb. So, without any further ado, ado on to the Fred Mulder Awards, named after the uh, founder of uh, GoGN, Fred Mulder, who sadly passed away in, in 2018. Um, so we give away two awards every year, one for the best open education, ed education? a research paper um, published in an open access journal written by a GoGN member, and one for best open educational practice or research project. And we asked people to submit uh, proposals for these, um, and they were judged by the team and a previous winner, Michael Pascovicius. So um, thanks to everyone who submitted. Uh, it was a really good entry this year, and we sort of went around it quite a few times. And we tried to sort of quote, um, grade them on uh, their significance, their uh, originality, but also how much they kind of represent the, the GoGN network. I think it was a kind of, we have a, we had a fact that it was something like GoGN-ness. So I think that, that there's also an element of that. So moving on, I'm going to ask the winners if they would like to say a word, but bear in mind the time. This isn't a, a one-hour presentation about your project or paper. It's just to say a couple of words what it's about, things like that. But we might well get you back in the new year to do a one-hour presentation about them. Um, cool. So uh, the best paper winner is uh, Amy, uh, who published this paper um, in the uh, in GIME, in the special issue, which was coordinated by Sarah Lambert, a GoGN member, and Laura Chernovitz. And um, there were lots of GoGN people who published in that journal. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't coordinated by us, but I think it's kind of one of those nice sort of peripheral outputs that come from the community itself. Uh, and uh, we really liked Amy's paper, and that was, a, that was a winner from all of us. So I'm just going to ask you to say a couple of words, Amy, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, can you hear me? Excellent. Um, so I first just want to say thank you uh, to the reviewers, to uh, Gojian, to everyone who's involved um, to take on the additional work of doing an awards review in 2020 is is a lot. So thank you for that. Um, just real quick. So this, this paper was uh, built around the idea that I think a lot of us in open ed have assumptions about the diversity and inclusion uh, within our textbooks and within our open materials. Um, that aren't necessarily borne out by the research. And so uh, this was a sort of dual paper, sort of uh, covering the idea that open textbooks perhaps aren't as uh, diverse as they need to be, and then describing a project that I did both with my students and with some other people in my discipline to diversify um, the OpenStax psychology book that's used all across the world. Um, and so it's sort of a how-to guide with also some background on, on why it's a necessary sort of project. And um, so yeah, so that, that's what we did. Um, that, that's the short uh, summary. And I would be happy to, uh, I'll drop my uh, email in the chat and happy to discuss that further um, with anyone who wants to. Great, many thanks, Amy, Amy, and uh, huge congratulations. We really like to. I think it's all brought together um, 
lots of things that we, we talk a lot about in GoGN, uh, issues of diversity and, and questioning openness as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm already using your paper, actually, Amy, in a, we're developing a micro-credential next year on um, on diversity and inclusion. I think it's a really good example of how you can, you can sort of approach that quite practically and also the questions you need to ask. So, uh, yeah, excellent paper. Thank you. Uh, and we had joint runners up. Um, first of all was uh, Aris, um, which was a kind of a real GoGN paper. So like, I, I, I'll let you say, Aris, on how many, how many co-authors you had on this, but a tremendous effort to produce a paper in a very short space of time, looking at the, um, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and including so many uh, different authors and a lot of them from GoGN and sort of Aris used, uh, we've got a WhatsApp group, Aris used a lot of that to coordinate people. So I'll let you say a few words, Aris, it's good to see you. Um, thank you, Martin. Uh, actually, I'm really happy to get the work because uh, we worked on it in a tight schedule during the lockdown days, and there were many uh, go uh, gainers who contributed to it. Um, actually, we intend to make it as inclusive and representative as possible, and the final paper reported cases from uh, 31 countries, written by 39 authors, and there were many uh, contributors from our group. Actually, I didn't count how many uh, how many people were there, but there were, I think, maybe uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I have to count. Thank you. Thanks, Harris. Yeah, it, it was really timely because just after it came out, um, Kathy Cassily from uh, who was one of the founders of um, Original People of Hewlett um, got in touch with me and said, like, oh, is there any, any work in uh, GoGen that's looking at the, the impact of the pandemic? I was like, aha, have I got a paper for you? <laughs> so, so thank you for that, saved me a lot of work. Um, and the joint run-up was uh, Ada and Virginia. I think, uh, I'm not sure if Ada's here, I know Virginia's here. So Virginia, would you like to say a few words? And again, this is a kind of a very GoGen paper, I think, and then it kind of looks critically at uh, OEP and uh, challenges. Um, and, and I think one of the things we've seen in, in GoGN over the past few years is a shift from just focusing on OER as a thing to much more kind of broader the context within which they sit. And this was a really good example of that. So I'll let you say a few words, Virginia. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we are very, very proud and feel very honored uh, to be part of this. Uh, Fred Mulder uh, Awards. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Ada, Ada can uh, could, uh, connect because she had uh, some uh, issues uh, with her computer. So uh, perhaps uh, I, I can I can talk about this this uh, this project. Uh, we are very um, uh, we feel that the Praxis project uh, uh, was one of our uh, this experience is in, 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 in connecting uh, many issues regarding, um, uh, regarding open education because we uh, managed to connect, um, uh, perhaps I can, I can uh, uh, introduce about, uh, something about the project. It's a project uh, um, between uh, the university uh, and the, um, the center that is uh, um, focused on the uh, formation of, uh, of teacher, teacher education. And uh, we worked with two communities. Uh, one of the uh, teachers that are uh, uh, um, participating in, in their, in their uh, um, career as, as teacher. And the other one was a, a community that uh, are teachers, uh, university teachers in, 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 in service. And uh, um, we worked while uh, during uh, four years uh, because we we managed to to earn two projects in in this issue, uh, and um, uh, the methodology is uh, I think it's interesting because it connects uh, uh, open science, uh, open practices, and um, we we. Uh, um, we uh, made an action research project. Uh, it was an academic professional learning community. Also, we, we, we uh, connected the, the, uh, the methodology of uh, op open uh, communities and uh, communities of practice, communities of learning, 
and also uh, action research, educational action, action research. So um, in the context of uh, the public higher education in Europe. And um, the project aim was to explore teaching practices in the integration of uh, digital technologies in a meaningful way into teaching. Um, we examined the potential benefits of these uh, uh, professional learning communities and also uh, focused on open practices, uh, open communities, and uh, and uh, the, the, the convergent uh, approach to open education uh, for the reflection and transformation of teaching practices and fostering teaching innovation. Um, in the article, we uh, describe the practice research design uh, and um, we uh, we also uh, yeah, develop uh, an analysis uh, focused on uh, the the, the uh, interactions and the, the way uh, teachers uh, communicate their reflections and also their uh, decisions regarding uh, teacher design and curriculum design and uh, instructional design and uh, the way they uh, uh, develop uh, as a community. Uh, their decisions and uh, the way they uh, also uh, make uh, some uh, advice and comments regarding the the others uh, uh, decisions and the, the others uh, reflection and uh, we use uh, our social network analysis so as to uh, to see these uh, art interactions mm -hmm. and to see the, these uh, uh, constructions and uh, we uh, really uh, um, find that uh, uh, a footprint of this educational action research design and on a strengthening uh, reflective uh, practice. So um, Praxis Project is a, 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 a very interesting uh, project and this article it was one of the, of the first we, we developed uh, uh, with uh, with a uh, with Ada that is also connected with uh, her PhD in education, so uh, we are very happy and very honored for this uh, prize. Thank you very much, Ruti, and, and um... great. Thank you, Virginia. Yeah, and pass our best on to Ada if you if you see uh, or contact her later. Good, thank you. Uh, so moving on to um, best open educational practice, uh, we are joint winners for this. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, Tomo to speak first uh, on, on his um, project and developing a collaborative OEP case study, and then I'll move on to Helene. So over to you first, Tomo. Good to see you. Um, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello. Okay, great. Um, hello, everyone. I am uh, Tomo from uh, Carnegie Mellon University in the, in the United, United States. Uh, it's good to see you, uh, everyone, you know, virtually uh, here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for reviewing on um, our work and also on uh, inviting uh, uh, me to this uh, event. It's very nice um, that I was a I'm able to uh, speak a little bit about this, this project. Um, so this project was about a, the co-designing on um, uh, open educational resources and evaluate the effectiveness of open educational resources um, with its end users, uh, in, in our case, teachers um, in middle schools in the United States. Um, I have been very interested in um, how we could, you know, connect research and practice in a meaningful way. And as a, I, I used to be an instructional designer, so that has been my focus uh, on my PhD. Um, I'm almost finishing. Um, and so in this project, I so we design uh, visual representations for middle school uh, mathematics with teachers and we evaluate its effectiveness um, in actual field studies uh, looking at student learning and we distributed uh, our work uh, our resources as uh, as all we are um, in multiple ways to um, allow for uh, flexible repurposing and i'm gonna um so this is something that we um, presented at the Open Education Conference uh, that happened uh, last month. And I'm going to put a link uh, here in the chat. Um, 
the, this page describes more about the, the entire project and also um, the papers that we uh, publish around this work. Yeah, uh, again, thank you very much, on everyone. Excellent, thank you very much, Tom. Yeah, that was a fascinating project. And we may get you back to talk about it in more detail next year, actually. So, uh, And I'll move on to Helene uh, Polka, who was also going to talk about her project. Um, or it might be by, uh, is Katrina still here? Or she, or can we, no, just you. Karina. Hi, hi, Martin. Thank you very yeah. much. Can you Absolutely. hear me yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, can hear you good. Yeah, hi, Helene. Yeah, okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, on behalf of the toolkit team, I'd like to uh, say thank you very much to uh, um, Georgian and the um, reviewers for this award. We are very, very pleased and honoured to receive this important um recognition so um thank you all so um we at the start of the pandemic um we received um a lot of um emails and questions and um <laughs> panicky <laughs> colleagues <laughs> um contacting us um about teaching languages online because um it, it's always been the case that um for some reason, because languages is a skill, um, people just don't understand or don't see how it can be done online. So there was a lot of panic from from colleagues. Um, so we we helped as 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 we could, but um, in the end, a group of us um, decided that perhaps it would be a good idea to put something together to try to reach out um, to all the people who were. Who were out there wondering what to do uh, and that's how the toolkit um, um, emerged so um, it's for language teachers in higher education and we hope that um, it's going to be used as much as possible and it's going to um, help uh, language teachers to engage in uh, sharing and communicating about teaching languages online and and sharing good examples to hopefully see that um, show that it can be done um, so if Karina is still here she can maybe say a couple of words about uh, maybe what we want to do with the toolkit after that Karina yeah Karina's yes done. hello yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Uh, I've had problems with my internet, sorry. Um, yes, I think what we're really excited about is that the toolkit um, was met with a lot of interest. We've had, um, I don't know, 2,000 people downloading the application now, and we are thinking about extending it in further directions. One of them is that um, we have been contacted by school teachers, secondary school teachers, who are interested in having a version that um, refers more to their special needs, because obviously university language teaching is a bit difficult. So we are thinking of or different, sorry, different from school teaching. So we are thinking of developing it in this direction. And we are also thinking of um, presenting it more as a proper qualification, taking it on a more professional level. So to offer a course or a MOOC or something like this um, on language teaching uh, online, so to, yeah, to come up with more um, technology and more ideas for that. Yeah, and let me thank you. My thanks to the whole team is very pleased. Thank you very much. Thanks, Karina. Uh, yeah, so on that point, it's amazing how many times I've seen this year, like, you can't teach subject X online. And you think, have, we, have the past 50 years not happened or whatever? It's like. So it was great that you kind of were able to move so swiftly to demonstrate that. OK, so that's all the awards done. Uh, thank you, everyone submitted and congratulations again to all the winners well done and i'm going to pass on to beck and packer now to talk about the survey hi martin thanks very much well done everyone as well it's fantastic um and really difficult decisions that we had to make as well um but yeah thank you to everyone who um put themselves forward um so this next segment um is gonna um focus on this year's annual survey. So I'm going to hand over to Paco in a minute, but another big thank you to 
all of our members um, and alumni for um, contributing to this year's um, survey. And what we wanted to do with this segment is um, tell you a little bit more about some of the results of that survey and um, next steps. So I'll hand over to Paco um, to, to kick us off. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, it's been a, a very uh, collaborative and supportive to have a representation from, from members. Uh, the idea of the survey this year was as well to try to capture uh, in these very particular times the the ideas of uh, members and alumni, all the feedback we could get uh, on the different activities and, and support during this 2020, and ways to improve and move forward. For that reason, we have included uh, different types of questions, uh, several ones uh, to rank different features and benefits, but as well uh, qualitative to get uh, feedback and opinions uh, from uh, you all. That means that uh, we got uh, uh, 32 uh, respondent, respondents, which uh, means more or less one third of uh, the network. And as well, it includes uh, uh, kind of uh, equal uh, separation between current members and those who are already part of the alumni uh, group. So in that sense, one of the one of the aspects uh, that the uh, members could uh, could rate were the benefits of CoGN during this year. And uh, one of the aspects that has been considered uh, best are the webinars. So we keep on doing webinars and uh, and having these events every month. Uh, as well, uh, because of the switch to online, uh, we have as well provided support uh, for attending conferences such as the summer uh, summit of ALT or uh, OE Global. Uh, it's been quite popular, the WhatsApp group. So an area in which uh, we can uh, discuss uh, different aspects uh, that are not only academic, but we can uh, get uh, uh, discussions around many areas. So just uh, using your phone straight away. Uh, because of the change uh, to from face to face this year to online, we have uh, organized several online mini seminars which as well have been ranked as a good benefit and an area to, to discuss and get to know what others peers are doing. And uh, Twitter remains to be a popular tool uh, within GoGN uh, and a way to get to know about news and share news and so on. And then over to Beck. Oh, thanks, Paco. Um, so I think, um, as Paco said, one of the really key things that's come through in the survey was um, about the network and the connection um, and uh, that GoGN kind of bringing us together. Um, so these quotes, um, which were taken from the survey, um, kind of really bring home um, some of the awesome comments that we had from people. Um, so this idea of kind of um, the, the network nurturing people um, uh, along um, in, in their kind of um, pathway through their, their doctoral studies. And then also the kind of focus on um, OER, OEP, open learning and this connection and being enabled to be involved in things um, like the research handbook um, as well. And that was something that was new um, for this year, um, these kind of collaborative publications. Um, we're gonna be doing more of those in the future. And I know that Rob's gonna talk a little bit more um, about those um, in a bit. Um, but these were some of the kind of um, uh, some of the things that members said that really um, helped to kind of bring this into a particularly sharp focus. Oh, sorry. So moving on, um, we also asked people to um, rank the most important features of GoGN. And again, it's that community of peers and the networking, which was really coming through as being one of the things um, uh, that are so uh, important to um, to our members. And um, we've got some more quotes to kind of help um, illustrate that um, as well here. Um, one of them was around feeling more connected to colleagues around the world. So, so having an, um, a connection and, a, and, and being able to see what people are doing in other areas um, and other countries around the world. And then also that kind of international um, membership of GoGN as well. Someone um, commented about how that's one of the strongest assets that Net Network has. So um, really fantastic to hear that we, um, uh, as the network grows and as more um, as our membership grows, um, that that's really creating connections and, and encouraging and helping and supporting people 
on their doctoral uh, journeys. Thanks, Pak Orton. So yes, some of the observations we, we are getting in that sense is that uh, we are getting uh, 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 these new activities are being uh, uh, possibly, uh, um, I mean, observed by our members, and we are getting this uh, positive feedback and uh, getting as well from uh, from the responsive uh, range of suggestions uh, to help us to refine and work in uh, providing uh, new um, approaches, like for example, the use of different languages. And as well to include uh, other activities that are uh, going to support us and the network and the way we are working, and as well was to consider uh, that uh, possibilities to work uh, and positive feedback in terms of uh, managing the network together. And uh, in that sense, uh, we are uh, quite happy and proud of feedback in terms of uh, of ideas and and, and voices that are in. Uh, things how they are being achieved and how we can uh, think about uh, working together and, and keep on uh, doing things and achieve those objectives. And uh, what some of the next steps include uh, as well, uh, we have selected some uh, results uh, that are in the uh, GoGN annual review, but as well, we are gonna keep on uh, analyzing this uh, data and. Uh, consider the suggestions and to work together uh, early uh, next year to think about how we can actually improve together and, and keep on uh, doing uh, these ideas together. I don't know, Becky, you want to add something else? Thanks, Paco. Yeah, just to um, just to really uh, build on what Paco was saying, um, and we're going to be developing recommendations from the suggestions. There were some fa fantastic ideas from members about things that we um, could do in the future. Um, and particularly around more kind of collaborative activity. Um, and we'll have some announcements in the new year around that. But also I wanted to develop some recommendations as well to move forward, um, particularly around how we kind of build um, the network um, uh, in the Global South. Obviously we've got some fantastic work going on through the DEI um, work that Judith has um, done and um, Karina and Viv um, are, are doing currently, as well as, um, comments and recommendations that other colleagues have made um, in the survey. So we're looking to really um, uh, work on those and take those forward in early 2021. So thank you again to everyone who participated um, in the survey and, and for all your comments and contributions, really appreciate them. Thank you. So I think we're moving on now to network outputs. Um, I'm going to hand over to Rob. Okay, thank you, Beck. So uh, I'm going to um, just talk a bit about some of the activity uh, that we've had in 2020 um, and look ahead to some of the activity coming up uh, in 2021. So to start with, um, you can you can see um, a bigger uh, version of this in our annual review uh, report, which is now live on the website. Uh, but we did a timeline, um, which is, I think, the first time we've done this, um, to try and get a sense of kind of what a GoGN year looks like, um, especially at the moment where things are not necessarily happening as they usually do. Um, so uh, thinking back to like end of 2019, um, so in October, we were in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, um, November, we were in Milan for OE Global. Um, and, you know, re remember that? Remember going places and seeing people? Um, so the end of 2019 still had some of that, but 2020, obviously, um, a lot of what we um, would normally do is moved online. So um, we had, I, th I think, a really strong uh, webinar program and really strong um, online presence this year, partly because, you know, we had to focus on it and and do more of it. Um, but you can look at this in more detail yourself uh, when you look at the uh, year in review. But you can see that um, throughout the year, we've got um, more publications. We have a really good webinar program. We've also got kind of guest speakers. And then going through to the conference activity in the last couple of months, 
I think it's actually been, you know, a really good year for GoGN, even if it hasn't been um, a typical year. I want to talk a bit about the um, the outputs uh, from GoGN for this year. Um, and this is something that's kind of new to this phase of the project, um, where we actually have things that GoGN does, things that GoGN writes as a network. So um, there's been sort of three main outputs this year, which I'm just going to talk about briefly. So first of all, um, we had our research methods handbook. Um, and if you haven't yet heard of it, um, we had contributions from a number of members talking about how they'd use different research methods in their own uh, work in open education. Uh, and we also wrote some stuff which is kind of a bit more general about research methods and you know what it means, why it's complicated, and how to orientate yourself. Um, and it's proved to be quite popular beyond the network, had a lot of downloads. Um, we got the Open Education Award uh, in November. Um, and one of the things that I liked about this um, as an output was um, it was really about openness in practice amongst our members and about sharing within the network and more widely things that tr in a traditional approach you might not share. Um, so I think it's a really kind of useful resource from that point of view, but also um, just as a practical tool for people who are um, commencing or in the middle of their doctoral studies. Um, the second output that we was a new thing for us was uh, a, a review by members of contemporary research. Um, so in the summer we had a um, list of papers, we've got volunteers, reviewers, and we put together uh, a kind of collective take on what's happening out there at the moment in terms of um, research and open education. This is a useful thing, I think, both to do um, in terms of developing your own, your own understanding of what's going on, but also um, just as a kind of useful resource for everyone. You know, we sort of share the effort and share the share the reward with this, and so we all kind of you know get the benefit of other people's reading. I think it's quite an interesting way of of doing it. Um, so I think this was quite successful as well. Uh, and just published today, there's our annual review. So um, in some ways, it's a kind of expanded version of some of the things we're talking about today. So stuff about the, the award winners, the fellowships, um, the webinars that we've had going on, things that have been published, things that have been achieved. Um, and it includes the results of the members survey. Um, so again, uh, a bit different, a different function to the other outputs, but I think um, in a way it reflects us kind of reaching another level of maturity with this stuff and, you know, having an annual kind of account of what's been going on. Um, so I think it's, you know, a kind of a, a, a watershed for us to have a, an annual kind of uh, take like this. So um, they were some of the main um, things that we did this year. Um, just looking forward to next year, um, we basically want to keep much of the strategy intact. Uh, so some of the things we're thinking about at the moment, uh, first of all, to do an updated version of the Research Methods Handbook, had feedback from a, a few people, and um, also we've got some more people finishing their doctoral studies, and it would be good to capture their insights and kind of include them into the uh, Methods Handbook. Um, but also, I think it would be good to commission some people to write some little, you know, targeted bits for it, stuff like that. So I think we could we could do that sometime um, next year. Um, there's a companion volume to that planned, which is uh, uh, more focused on theories and conceptual frameworks and how they appear in open education research. Um, haven't got that far with it yet, right? Because we we uh, We'll have a webinar in the spring focused around it, and we'll kind of get some input from people on you know what they'd like to see in that. Um, but maybe put it on your horizon for next year. We might be asking for people to write bits and just kind of contribute to it. I think it would be useful to have as many people as, as possible, like we did for the methods handbook. Uh, we're going to do another round of our uh, research review in the summer. So we'll be putting together a list of new research and looking for people to write short critical reviews. Um, and then next. Uh, winter, there'll be another annual review, um, like the one published today, and that'll try and capture uh, the most recent achievements of the network, hopefully with a bit more travel and a bit more going on than 2020. So um, in the spring, we've got the uh, call for participation in the new handbook. 
Um, there'll be our online workshop around OER 21 and the launch of the second fellowship scheme, the 2021 scheme. Um, in the summer, we'll be sponsoring some more places at the Alt Summer Summit. Uh, we'll have our research review for next year, um, and we'll be publishing the uh, the handbook. Um, somewhere around there, we might fit in the update of the methods handbook. Um, then autumn, we've got the annual survey again. Uh, we'll be running a uh, seminar face to face, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, at OE Global. Um, and also, um, assuming there is an open ed, uh, we'll be there and we'll be organizing a meetup for GoGN members. And then next winter, um, similarly to this winter, we'll have the uh, Fred Mulder Awards 2021. There'll be another um, annual review and we'll be publishing the results of the research review. So it's looking busy, looking like there's quite a lot to look forward to. So um, I'm handing over to Beck. Is that right, or Martin? Hi, Rob. Um, Beck here. Just um, quickly as well, looking forward, we've got our next, um, our first webinar of the year as well on the 6th of January. Um, okay. So keep an eye out for um, something in your inbox and on social very soon um, about that. It will be a drop-in session, but just to give you the heads up um, on that. Thank you. So uh, am I handing over to you? Or? I think it's handing over to Martin. Martin, Martin, are you there? Yeah, thanks, Rob. So mm -hmm. I think really we just want to say thank you to all the uh, members of the network and everyone who's contributed and participated. Um, it's been a been a good year in some ways, as Rob says, but also a very strange year. And I think lots of our members have been the people who've been at the kind of a lot of the, uh, the real edge of all this, I think, are trying to support other colleagues and moving online. And sort of, um, that's my dog sign sarcastically, um, and uh, and trying to help them make use of open resources and those kind of things. So that they've been stressed as well, and I think, and have still managed to contribute to the to, to the network as a whole. And I think it's been a very productive year. So um, I think that's it. I just want to say thank you. Have a good holiday for those who are having a holiday now. Um, do get in touch with us if you have any ideas or any comments you want to make. Um, just to say that we've that report that Rob mentioned, the annual review, is now available for download. I'll put the link in there. Uh, there's more more penguin graphics in there, of course, for you to use in your presentations. I know you only come for the penguins. Let's not pretend it's for any academic insight. So uh, thanks for everyone for joining in, and thanks for your contribution of the year. I hope you managed to have some break and some rest. Uh, over the holidays and we'll see you in 2021 and um that's it again thank you very much <laughs>